Hey guys, I just wanted to um, reach out to you today and and uh, just share with you a little bit of encouragement. I mean, I'm I'm sitting here in in an empty sanctuary, and um, um, and it's not because of weather issues or uh, a power outage. It's because of a virus, and um, um, and it's not just impacting our community, but it's, it's all around the world. Um, I spoke with some friends this past week in Tel Aviv and in India, and all of them are experiencing the same kinds of things, lockdowns, um, quarantines, and, and not able to have services. Um, but um, we're all trying to, to, to do our best to be creative as a community of faith to to minister to a world that's filled with fear right now um, and uh, I guess one of the things that I wanted to encourage you with uh, today is you know in the in the old covenant God had a temple for his people but in the in the new covenant God has a people for his temple so you know, wherever you are right now watching this, if you're a child of God, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So wherever you are, that's where He is. And um, I just want to encourage you with that today. Also, as I, as I think about what I, what I want to share uh, with you today, just a couple weeks ago, I, I shared a message that that I, I felt was very timely for our church, but um, I think it's, it's very timely for where we're at today in our world. And, um, and, and that is, you know, in light of all that we may not understand or know uh, right now, God is shaping His church. God is shaping his church it this virus this disease it could change it could change the shape of the church but but and if it does that's all right because God is taking care of his church Jesus is going to take care of his bride so yeah God is shaping his church and also I believe in light of all that I may not understand or know God is stirring up the nest uh, Moses in in Deuteronomy 32, he describes God as, as an eagle that's stirring up its nest. Um, I got to look in that, looking at that, and I didn't realize that an eagle will build its nest out of rough and sharp objects and then cover it with feathers. And then when it's time for the eaglets to grow to grow up and fly, the eagle starts removing the feathers and it gets too uncomfortable to stay. Um, and so I'm, I, I, I believe that in light of all this going on, God is stirring up the church. He's stirring up the nest. Uh, we, it's time for us to grow and to go. It's time for us to, 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 to advance to a, a higher level of faith and trust. So I, I know that God is shaping His church, and I know that God is stirring up the nest. And something else I know is that the enemy is lurking. The devil is looking for an opportunity, obviously in all of this, to, to, to discourage, to distract, to disable, and ultimately to destroy. But as I said, I, I believe... I know that God is going to take care of His church. Listen, the Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail. I heard somebody say the other day that this virus, this disease, this, this fear is inspired by hell. It probably is. But God is going to take care of His church. Again, the gates of hell shall not prevail. So, so what are we to do? In these days, I want to encourage you. And you've heard me share these things before, but I want to encourage you to lift up your head. 
to keep lifting up your head. The psalmist says, I will lift my eyes unto the hills from where does my help come? He says, my help comes from the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth. The psalmist was looking at those hills and he knew that there were resources in those hills, but he knew that his strength, ultimately his help, came from the one who made those hills. And so let's just keep lifting our heads. Let's keep lifting our hands. Yes, we got to keep worshiping. We got to keep lifting our hands. The psalmist says, in your name, I will lift up my hands. And of course, our hands lifted is a posture of trust and surrender. We are trusting God in these days. Yes, we're not only looking to him for our help, but we are worshiping him. He is our God, and he is worthy of our praise. And, um, and of course, we need to keep lifting our hearts. We keep lifting our heads, our hands, and our hearts. That is, we just need to keep praying. We need to just keep being honest with God. Psalms 25 says, unto thee, O Lord, I will lift up my soul. He's just saying, God, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be gut honest with you. I'm going to keep sharing with you whatever's on my heart. I think it's so important. That in these days when we might be a little anxious at times to keep praying, to keep the lines of communication open, to keep trusting God, to keep calling out to Him for His help. And, and as we shared with the church last week, I, I want you to continue to pray that, that God would stop this virus, that God would inspire our president and, and all of our leaders, that, that, uh, that God would bless His church not only universally, but right here at Calvary, right here locally, and that souls would be saved. Ultimately, through all this, that souls would be saved and lives changed. So, yes, I want to encourage you to keep lifting your head, to keep lifting your hands, and to keep lifting your heart. We've got to keep looking to the Lord. We've got to keep worshiping. We've got to keep praying. And then the other thing, you've got to keep feeding your faith. Listen, if all you do is watch the news and go to the grocery store and can't find what you need, you're going to just feed your fears. You're going to feed that anxious feeling on the inside. What we need to do right now more than anything is to feed our faith. And you've got to go to the Word of God to do that. You're not going to feed your faith any other way. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So Take your Bible, open the pages of your Bible, go to your phone, and open up your Bible app, read the Word of God and allow it to feed your faith. And I've got one more thing I want you to do. You know, it was never intended for us to, to walk this road of faith alone. In fact, God said in the beginning, it's not good for man to be alone. Today, here's my challenge for you. Today, I want you to pick up your phone and I want you to call somebody. I want you to call some. I want you to encourage them on the phone. And then be sure to pray together over the phone. Can you do that? I want to encourage you to do that. Listen, we need each other right now. And we need to be encouraged. And the body needs to be the body. We need to work together. And so I want to encourage you to call somebody today. Don't just text. Call somebody. I want you to hear their voice. I want them to hear your voice. And I want you to agree together in prayer. Again, praying for these things that we've, we've been in church, encouraging the church to pray for, okay, in this time. Now, you're going to have to initiate this. Don't wait for somebody to call you. Listen, at the end of the day, I don't want you sitting around thinking, well, nobody's called me. You've got to participate. You've got to pick up your phone. You've got to do your part, all right? I want us working together. I want us serving together. I want us to encourage one another together. I want to leave you with a passage of Scripture that's always been a great encouragement to me. Psalm 16. It says, Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I will say of the Lord, You are my God. Apart from you there is no good thing. As for the saints in the land, they were the glorious ones of all your delight. Now the sorrows of those will increase who follow after other gods. But Lord, you've assigned me my portion in my cup. My lot is secure. 
The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. And even at night, my heart instructs me. I will set the Lord always before me. And because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart will be glad and my tongue will rejoice and my body will rest secure because he will not abandon me. For you have made known to me the path of life and you will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures that are at your right hand forevermore. God bless you. We'll be, we'll be talking again soon, all right? Have a great day.